All right. All right, so today's hike, we are going to the Hudson Highlands Gateway Park. Pork chop. This is located in Northwest Chester, New York, in the town of Cortland, who maintain it. They have a dog waste station here and at the other entrance, which is nice. You can expect to find a bevy of reptiles. The sign-in thingy is all the way over there, but all the trails are this way, so I'm not sure why it's over there. All right, come on, pork chop, let's go. Pork chop and I like to do this hike because usually there's no one here. We go early in the morning and we let her off leash, but honestly, I've gone later in the day too, and we like, never see anyone here. Come on, cutie pie. So the idea for these videos that I'm calling the Hike and Chat series, at least that's what I've called it in my head when I've conceptualized it, is that, uh, I mean, I go on these hikes quite a bit, and I think like all the time, I tend to be really in my head. Uh, so I was thinking for Hike and Chats, I could hike around, show you guys some of the places that I like to go, and chat about things that are on my mind, kind of like a radio show, kind of like a solo talk radio show with hiking. And I guess you don't really need to watch the video, you don't really need to listen to me speak either, but hopefully the combination of two, the two will be to the satisfaction of whoever finds themselves viewing these. All right, you ready to go free pork chop? Hold on you. Hey, pork chop, pork chop, pork chop. Hey. Pork chop doesn't pay attention sometimes. Hey, pay attention, Boba. All right, you're free. Run. So what Porkchop and I like about this park, other than the fact that there's no one here, is that there's like eight different routes you can take. Porkchop, come! All right. Yeah, run around. Run, run, run. Run, run, run. Oh, crazy girl. Anyway, where was I? Um, what we like about Hudson Highlands Gateway Park, which is the full name of this park, is that uh, there's like a ton of different ways that you can do it, you know, other than the fact that it's empty. Uh, there's a ton of different trails in here. You can kind of mix and match. They all are just like, it's like eight kind of loops that overlap and cross each other in various ways. So it's pretty modular. You can kind of just decide as you go how long you want your walk to be, how difficult you want it to be, and if you want to incorporate any scenic views. Now, pork chop, come on. The caveat, come on pork chop, to Hudson Highlands Gateway Park, is that there's only one view to be had and it's not that spectacular. Having said that, I don't hike for the views. I hike for the experience. I feel like when my heart is beating at like 120 beats per minute, that's like perfect heartbeat for me to have less anxiety, you know? Like if it's more than that, I'm under like physical 
duress a little bit, which is fine and fun and good. And I often feel quite good when I'm really pushing the heart rate. But I find that at like a steady 120, 125 is when I can get like just good thinking done and feel nice, feel good and like active, you know? I feel like I'm using the body without putting too much stress on it. Anyway, that's not to say that I'm at 120 right now. I don't know what I'm at. I think I'm probably at like 110. Usually we go that way. But today we're going on a longer walk. Come on, pork chop. So one of the things I wanted to talk about this walk and something that's been on my mind a lot lately is like the idea of expectations and having a picture in your mind of something and what happens when that expectation becomes a reality or when there is a reality that happens that supersedes that expectation or replaces it. And what I've found is that whenever I have an expectation, something that's really important to me, I'll picture it in my head and I'll have a whole idea of what I think this thing is going to be like. For those of you who don't know, and I guess that's no one because I don't really plan on advertising this channel to my friends and family too much. Uh, my wife is pregnant. She's like seven months pregnant now, six months pregnant. She's in her third trimester anyway. And I'm really excited. I can't wait. I've wanted to have a kid for forever. My dad died very tragically when I was a late teenager. And I definitely have like some kind of complex about, you know, being a father and being there for my children and able to like fulfill their lives in a way that I feel like mine hasn't been, I guess. Um, but anyway, so my wife is pregnant and she, and I think about this baby all the time. I think about him all the time. We're having a boy. And I wonder what he's going to be like. And it just kind of gets me thinking more broadly about this idea of, of expectation and how we can build something up in our heads so much and think about it so much. And like, I mean, for me at least, I get like so granular in my visualizations of the things that I anticipate and what they might be like. I get so like, I get so, I get so immersed that by the time the thing comes, it's unimaginable to me, it's unimaginable to me that it would be any different than I've imagined it. It's unimaginable to me that it would be any different than what I've pictured. Pork chop, come on. Hey, come. Come. But invariably what winds up happening is the thing comes and my expectation is gone. Like, not just it's been replaced, but I can't even recall it anymore. And that's really interesting. And I just have been like trying to be really mindful of that and conscious of that because I do have an idea in my mind of what this baby's going to look like and what he's gonna be like and how we're gonna feel. And I just, something about knowing that I'm in a mindset right now that is temporary and that is fleeting and that whatever it is that makes up this mindset, I'm going to lose a part of it. Uh, something about that is really intriguing to me. So I want to try to be really mindful of this process because I'm basically building a human in my head right now. And granted, it'll be an infant who can't really take care of himself, but I'm basically building a human in my head. And when he comes out, he's not going to be the human that I've built. So that's interesting. And it's like a larger scale version of when I'm going on vacation. That's kind of what I'm thinking about. When I go on vacation, I have an idea in my head of what the place is going to be like. And it never is like that because you can't really visualize a place in advance like that without having seen it. You know, it's just all anticipation and expectation. So, what happens at the point at which you arrive at your destination and it is not what you imagined? In your brain, what is that mechanism? I'm gonna try to have my finger right on it while it happens this time, so 
maybe I'll have some more insight after the birth. Sorry about the car noise, by the way. We are, whoop, I just walked right through a really strong spider web. That's unfortunate. Sorry, buddy. Um, we're right by. The road is right through there. Pork chop, come on. Not super worried about pork chop getting in the road because there's this, a light stream between here and the road. So. Come on. Good girl. Along the lines of expecting things and reconciling the picture that we have in our head of something that we've anticipated with the reality of it when it arrives. The concept of like known unknowns, I guess, is super interesting because everyone just keeps telling us like, you have no idea, enjoy your lack of children while you can. They're gonna take away all of your free time. You really don't know, you really don't know. And we don't know. We really don't. But insofar as like we're capable of understanding that we're unprepared, we are. Ooh, frog. Oh, pork chop, you kicked the froggy. Cutie pie. <laughs> Porkchop's super intrigued by water, but she hasn't really like voluntarily swam anywhere yet. She loves splashing around though. And she just got a bath yesterday. Okay, come on. You cooled off a little bit? Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so we have this like idea that we are trying to prepare for something that we like only know that we're not gonna be prepared for. And how do you do that? Is the best way to prepare to just like try as hard as I can to achieve the intellectual understanding of the fact that I cannot prepare? Is that my best way to prepare? Or is attempting to actually prepare even though, you know, everyone's told me that you can't actually prepare and no amount of preparation is going to actually ready my mind for the massive change that's about to take place. I mean, which is correct and what's the best way to act, you know? I feel like, whoa, big old spider web. See? See that one in advance? That's good. Um, I feel like so many people's first instinct is to gatekeep a little bit. And I, I don't mean that in like a shitty way. I don't think people are being mean. But I do feel like, you know, people who've had kids, their first instincts might be when looking at new parents or people who are having their first kid, from the other side of that, their first instinct might be to flex a little bit, you know? It might feel good for them to be like, ah, oh, fuck, another fucking spider web. God damn it, they're everywhere. Um, pork chop, come on. Oh, there's another one, and there's my boy. He's a big boy, and we don't want to ruin his home. So where does this attach, though? How do we get around this? See, people like the spider stick. I hate that. I don't want to destroy the spider webs. Anyway, come on, pork chop. We're getting spidery today. Anyway, all this to say, I feel like people have an impulse a little bit to try to bolster themselves and that it is, it feels good to sort of show off your, your experiential knowledge to someone. And I don't think it's to the detriment of anyone's character. I think it's a very human tendency. And one that I try to pinpoint and like 
identify when it's happening so that I cannot do this. But I certainly, certainly fail at that all the time. People think I'm really pretentious, so make of that what you will. Whew, all right. So see, we are now at a point now where we can go that way if we want, or we can go this way. And I'm pretty sure that way will just take us kind of back and then we'll have a choice of making a smaller loop or going literally back the way we came. And this way, we're gonna have the choice of taking a bigger loop or an even bigger loop. Now, this hike is actually enclosed pretty well by Route 9 on our left here. That's on our like western side. And Sprout Brook Road on the east, to the right of where we're walking right now. And it kind of just hits houses to the north and south. So like we're very well, uh, very well insulated here from like getting lost. I mean, it's unfortunate about all the car noise, but yeah, you like can't get lost in this park. I don't know exactly how big it is, but not big enough to get lost in a way that I would be concerned by. Come on, cutie pie. So yeah, how do you prepare for something when the only commonality among things that people have told you is that you have no idea the myriad of ways in which your life is going to change and there's nothing you can do to truly understand it until it happens. That's true of everything, isn't it? <laughs> isn't that just true of everything? So what's the point of saying that? Because it's a bigger change? That seems silly. Every time we embark on something new, even when we don't, every time we interact with something, we open ourselves up to hearing information or having an experience that will fundamentally change the way that we perceive the world, the way that we perceive ourselves, the way that, woohoo, look at that. Oh man, I don't think the GoPro caught that, but that was a big old bird. It looked like a barred owl. And it's probably in the tree over there. Yeah, so what I'm saying is, it's dangerous business walking outside your front door, you know? It's dangerous business walking out your front door. You subject yourself to potentially life-changing revelations and character development at literally every turn. I fully believe that people are like, you know like the saying, there's always room for improvement. I think like the peak that people have gotten in, for, in terms of like virtue and goodness is probably pretty low on the goodness scale. So I feel like there's always room, massive, massive amounts of room for improvement. So with that in mind, every walk outside our, uh, every time we walk out into the world, we're, we're playing Russian roulette with severe character development. <laughs> Come on pork chop, maybe we'll see another owl. I think, so this is my first one of these videos. I have another YouTube channel uh, where I post like edited stuff. I probably have the link of it like all over this channel to be honest, but. And, I, and as I'm doing this, this is the first one of these I've filmed. I've been thinking about it for a while. Um, as I'm doing this, I'm sort of thinking like, am I gonna edit these? To what degree am I gonna edit them? And the point I think of this channel this second channel that I'm in a way on right now, though I am truly walking through the woods right now. Listen to those cars. My goodness. We're walking away from them now, so. My idea for this channel was gonna be that I wouldn't call myself a perfectionist, but I'm intensely judgmental of myself and of my work and my creative output. And I found that that has hindered my ability to get things out in a timely manner on the main channel and I have so much more to say than just 
scripted things about literature that I like. So yeah, the point of this channel is that it's going to be casual and unscripted, so there won't be a ton of editing, and I guess the audience for it will just be who it is. Good God, these cars. This is awful. We usually go here a little bit earlier. Don't worry, guys. We'll be back in the woods soon. If you're watching this for some casual woodland soundscapes, I really apologize. You're getting uh, some, well, some, some New York traffic noise. Not the New York traffic noise that you get down in the city, but New York traffic nonetheless. Ooh, I smell a skunk. Pork chop. Come on. There's an owl up there somewhere. Barred owls are what we get around here. They make amazing noises. You should look them up. The first time that Margo and I heard one, we thought it was a coyote. <laughs> we were like, there is a coyote in the backyard. They make such crazy noises. They sound like, ooh, big old spider web. They sound like, <laughs> Like, you'll think that there's a mammal in your backyard. <sighs> but yeah, overall, I guess the reason for all my anticipation is that I really can't wait to be a father. It's more than just like looking forward to being a father. Um, for me, I've spent so much of my adult life chasing the like magic and nostalgia of my childhood and like I've just been bogged down by wistfulness as a grown-up you know like I have a hard time not going back to cartoons and animated movies and all this shit and new ones too to try to recapture this immersive fantastic sort of magic of childhood and of the world being a place of discovery and wonder. And I'm not saying that it's not still, it very much is. But there's so much more that goes on in my head right now that sort of, I think, is, it attempts to prevent me from experiencing the world with the same wanderlust as I did as a kid. And I wanna do that, and I'm trying to do that. And starting this YouTube channel is very much a way of me embracing all the experiences life has to offer, but there is no recapturing the magic of childhood. And my childhood was great in a lot of ways and kind of shitty in a lot of ways. And I guess I'm like, I put a lot of pressure on myself for sure to make sure that like we are giving this boy and any subsequent children a really good life. But notwithstanding that very logistical pressure of like, I want my kids to be proud of their house and their family. I want them to feel comfortable having friends over all of these things that like, I felt like were lacking as a kid. That's fine and I wanna fix that and I am putting probably too much pressure on myself to, to fix all of these things. But what I'm looking forward to most is creating the magic again. Cause like, kids believe things. 
and they let themselves feel things in an unmitigated way. Pork chop, come on. That's something I like about my wife. I love about my wife as well. And I told this to her dad on our wedding day. He raised kids who were unafraid to experience joy. And I know that that sounds, I'm gonna flip the camera around because this is pretty. I know that that sounds like it's not that big of a deal. But for me, for whatever reason, experiencing joy is something I'm very cagey and insecure about, you know? Like if I get happy, I wanna hide how happy I feel. And that's definitely prevented me from like having as much fun as I would have in my whole life, basically. And I don't want my kids to have that. I want them to be able to experience joy and wanderlust and, and, and awe at things. And I also just want to take advantage of the fact that they're kids and provide some of that, some of that awe. And I feel like I'm a pretty intuitive person and like I'm a good storyteller and I feel like things a lot, you know, like I can, I'm good at like setting a vibe. So I feel like I'm going to be able to have, give these kids the vibiest, most fantastic childhood that they could possibly hope for, that he could possibly hope for them, God willing that, we're, you know, we have more. Um, but yeah, I'm just, the magic of like fall, right? And like scary stories and, and the woods and pumpkins and all the mysteriousness of the season. That's when he's gonna be born, by the way. Um, I, you know, I wanna really pump that up for him. I want him to look forward to the season every year because of how magical it is. And then Christmas, like, I want this kid to like have the most incredible Christmas. And then spring, celebrating all of the life, the survival of the winter. You know, I wanna really embrace all of the ways, all of the positive ways in which we can experience the like, the recurring and, and quotidian everyday beauty of life. I want the kid to know that and to experience it. Anyway, pausing here because Look at us, we are at the impasse of all impasses. There are three directions that we can go. Fortunately, I know which way we're going. We are gonna go this way. This is actually my favorite part of this walk. Ah. Not every loop hits this point, but this one does. It's just this nice, very elevated, we're pretty high up right now. Removed from the cars on both sides, though there aren't too many cars off to our east on our left right now. Um, Swarbrook Road is a small little road, but on the right what we've been hearing is Route 9, and I think Route 9's loud. But yeah, up here, removed from all of it. And that's kind of what I mean, you know, like <laughs> this, right? This is beautiful and magical. And I walk up here and the first time I saw it, I was like, wow, you know, like, thought about just coming up here with like a book or something and locking myself away, locking myself away, just camping out, you know, coming up here in the fall and watching the leaves turn and just all of the things that I could do, all of the promise that this like, just this one sort of forest spot offers. It's just this nice field up here. Think of all the adventures that could be had up here. The games that could be played. Manhunt. Oh my goodness. Would be so much fun. Trees to climb. Picnics. Everything, you know. Joints to smoke. There's magic in those teenage years. I look back on my, you know, renegade weed smoking days so fondly because finding spots to smoke and then getting surreptitiously stoned off shitty bowls, listening to music. <sighs> yeah, I mean, in Prospect Park for me, I grew up in Brooklyn, but for the boy, he'll have all this. And, and I very much want each of these places to have that same sense of promise for him. I want him to come up here, see places like this, and, and, and feel the same way. See all of the things that he could do. I want the world to be full of wonder for this boy, because it very much still is for me, and I'm the most cynical person ever. So like, if me, if I, the most cynical man in the world, 
am capable of feeling this like these stirrings of wonder from such simplicity i i feel like i'm going to be able to deliver this this boy the most magical childhood that a child has ever had pork chop come on <laughs> look at her pork chop come on Come, baby. Good girl. Yes. Getting your exercise in. Woo. Oh, so close. I just gave Porkchop a bath yesterday, so she's making sure to get as many birds as possible in her fur. We are approaching the view. There's two peaks in this park. One of them overlooks the landfill, and one of them overlooks the Hudson. Pretty much every like peak in the area, most of them anyway, uh, that show up at least on your popular hikes, overlook the Hudson River. loves to run here. Pork chop. She sees something. That's just a rabbit or something. It's crazy how fast our four-legged friends are. One time I was hiking, not in this park, a different one over in Peekskill, and I saw a coyote and it was terrifying. I thought it was a dog at first, it was huge. I was just walking on the trail and I looked up and it was like there, staring at me, legs like kind of squared up. Pork chop, come. And it looked at me and I looked at it. And we were maybe like 40, 30, 40 feet away from each other, but I was very aware of how quickly this coyote could close that gap if he wanted to. Come on you. Come pork chop. So I kind of just looked at him and I looked around for like a weapon, you know, cause it was really scary and he wasn't really turning around and I couldn't find one. And initially I turned around and like started to walk and I saw him start to move towards me, which was terrifying. So I wound up just staring at him for five minutes and then I, sl five minutes, it was probably like 30 seconds. And then I slowly walked away backwards. And uh, at one point I turned around and felt comfortable continuing to walk. But I say felt comfortable, I didn't feel that comfortable because I was super aware the whole time of the fact that like this coyote could be completely out of sight for me. He still knows where I am, right? Like. His senses are so good that he knows exactly where I went. Me being out of sight, me feeling like, oh goodness, I don't see him anymore. Or feel like we've got a hundred yards between us. That's nothing. He can very easily find me. And not only can he very easily find me, he can traverse the distance between us in no time. So I realized how insignificant my security, my like sense of security, that is the security that my senses told me I had was in that moment. And it was really something. Nothing happened, he didn't follow me or anything. It was terrifying though. And ever since then I think about like scale for animals and just how different it is. Like Porkchop just now, 
saw this bunny, you know, 200, 300 feet away. And for her, realistically, that is something that she could chase and get. Granted, she's not gonna be able to catch it, but seeing it and deciding to chase it, it wasn't far away enough that she was like, no, there's not a chance. And she went and chased it and she was there in 10 seconds. Oh, look at this spider web. Look at this guy. So cool. All right, let's not walk through that one. Hi, pork chop. So we're going to the view. Like I said, this is the, the view with an actual view. The one with the landfill view is to the north of us a little bit. I, I've only seen it, been there like once or twice. Once I found this view, I quickly like tailored all my walks so that this is the one that they sent around. <sighs> Good start to the day, huh, pork chop? And here we are. What I love most about this specific hike and like this peak, this view as it were, um, is this, this uh, log here. And it's because it reminds me very much of this spot in Prospect Park that I would go to to smoke when I was a kid. And it was the best spot. It was like my most consistent smoking spot. To a point where, like, if you saw anyone there, it was very, very likely that they were also doing the same thing. So there was virtually no point in having any type of, like, paranoia. You could feel very safe up there. Although once a cop on his bike did, like, bike all the way out to where it was, it's, like, out, well, that's fine. It's out on the, on the peninsula of uh, the lake in Prospect Park. There's, like, one, one, like, tip of the peninsula. That was always my favorite. All right, pork chop, we have to be, pork chop, come on. We have to be careful of the spider web, baby. I don't remember where it was. It's right there. I'll just go around this way. No, look at that. I'm going to it. Is it right there? Pork chop. <laughs> where was the giant spider web with the huge, beautiful spider that we don't want to walk through her web? I think it's right there. Or right there. <laughs> no, this is so stressful. Oh, I think it's down there. Okay, we're gonna go this way. Come on, pork chop. I'm not scared of spiders. I'm actually not. Um, and I'm confident in saying that because I used to be. Yeah, there it is. I can see it from here. My goodness, what a beautiful spider. Whoop. It's okay, buddy. I'm not gonna fuck with you. All right, we'll leave them alone. Um, we moved up here. We live, just so you guys know, we're in Putnam County, New York. My wife doesn't want me to get too specific with the location, but we're in Putnam County, uh, border of Putnam and Westchester. So general like Peekskill area. And uh, we moved up here like two years ago, year and a half ago. I grew up in Brooklyn. Lived in Brooklyn my whole life, went to school for a few years out in Stony Brook, so Long Island, and then quickly moved back home. So, city, city kid. Moved out of Brooklyn uh, at like 29 or 30 uh, to Tarrytown in Westchester, and then a year and a half ago moved from Tarrytown up here. And, uh, well, I was scared of spiders for like my whole childhood, terrified of them. And it was from 
my family had a house in western Massachusetts and like the spiders there were no joke big old wolf spiders and the like and they would terrify me didn't like it moved up here and I was like you know what like this is just not gonna fly and there were a few things that happened concurrently with moving here um I got this tattoo it's not a spider it's a velvet ant which is actually a wasp type of wasp whip that was a spider web um so i got this tattoo of the velvet ant moved up here and also got very into like wildlife youtube so coyote peterson but not just him like people like jack's world of wildlife although he wasn't really around then so i guess it was mostly coyote peterson at first but from there there are so many offshoots of good wildlife youtube that i got into um and he Coyote had a video where he handles a black widow spider, and I know, by the way, that Coyote Peterson's a little bit of a, 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 the butt of a joke in many ways. But I don't care, I like his videos. Um, so he handles a black widow spider, and the spider doesn't really fuck with him, and then he handles like a bunch of other ones in other videos, and then I got to thinking, I was like, here I am, you know, I'm living like more in the woods than I ever have before. We live in like a bed of just hiking trails, stuff like this. I mean, this is like right down the block from our house. It's two miles from our house. It takes five minutes to drive here. Less than that. Um, this is like our, our like least prestigious offering, you know? Ooh, black squirrel. Um, so we just have them everywhere. And when I was in Tarrytown, a big block for me, you'll notice actually that on my back, or around my neck anyway, I have this hat. And in my pocket, I actually have a net for the hat, and this is for bugs, right? I'm not wearing it right now, because the bugs aren't that bad, and because I'm shooting this video. Uh, but I got it initially, because I was on a hike, and I was like pretty stoned, and there were spider webs everywhere, and I was just freaking out. I was like, everywhere I walk, there's going to be a giant spider, I'm not like, they're going to be all over me. You know, I was really not happy with it. So I went on Amazon and I bought a net hat. And now I have it and I wear it for like mosquitoes mostly. Don't wear it for spiders and spider webs. And every time I take one of these walks, um, I actually wind up, I mean, you guys are witnessing it. I'm covered in spider webs to a point where I think that's probably protecting me from the bugs a little bit, to be honest. Like this just this layer of spider webs coating me. Um, I do try to avoid them. Anyway, my point is, I was like stuck in these woods in Tarrytown, and I had this terrible experience. And whoop, there's another one. Almost walked right into this big boy. Um, and I just thought to myself, this is silly. Like, not everyone's scared of spiders. You don't need to be. Like, you don't need to be walking through every spider web with wanton abandon, but you don't need to be scared of them. And so I decided that I wouldn't be scared of spiders anymore. And I just kind of like exposure therapied myself into not being scared of them. And here we are today. I'm genuinely not. And it took a little bit of work, but also there's something to be said for just like making the decision, saying this will not scare me anymore. And, and I honestly felt like I got, when I made that decision, when I like, didn't say it out loud, although I might have, but when I like, you know, acknowledge to myself that this isn't something that I will not be afraid of now, I really feel like that was like more than half the battle, honestly. So make of that what you will. This video is now how to conquer your fears, how to conquer your extremely low stakes and unfounded fears that you shouldn't have to begin with, basically. It's like the easiest fear to conquer. I'm not a fear conquering expert. Just a YouTuber. So now we're nearing the end. And if we were to go that way, we would be in this other network of trails that has the view of the landfill, which is right over here. Um, honestly, the view is probably like right up there. I, I like rarely go back there because there's a few small bodies of water. So it's like more buggy than the rest of the hike. And it's not as elevated. So it's extra more buggy. And it's just not, the woods just aren't quite as nice. But what is over there are a bunch of mushrooms. 
and it's been a really dry summer so my expectations are pretty low right now i'm not gonna go looking for them but ooh, there's something in there something big pork chop come here it's probably a deer come here sweetie sweetie come on it's supposed to rain this weekend and when it does we are gonna go chanterelle hunting. Come on, pork chop. Definitely a deer in there. Come on, baby. Don't worry about the deer. Deer are a dime a dozen in these parts. Should we talk about pork chop for a little bit? Are you guys curious about the illustrious chop? Pork chop, hey, show everyone how good you are. Yes. Oh, pork chop. Hold on, okay, you ready? Yes. Good girl. This is pork chop. She's 10 months old, right baby? Hey, beautiful. She loves eating grass. Her favorite color is pink. Even though dogs can't see pink, she loves pink things. Come on, cutie, let's leave whatever that is. She loves poop, especially deer poop. She will hunt down deer poop. <coughs> and when she finds it, no amount of yelling will make her let it go. You gotta physically take her away from the poop. She listens very well otherwise though, other than when she's like in something that she shouldn't have, like poop. She's a golden doodle, obviously. Um, She's very beautiful, obviously. Her mother was a golden, but her mother was like a quarter poodle or something. And her daddy was a straight up poodle. Whoa. She doesn't shed barely at all, which is really nice. And I know, you know, I, I have a lot of guilt actually about not adopting a dog. Um, not a lot of guilt, I have some amount of guilt. The guilt that I have is alleviated by the fact that like, I love pork chops so much. And like, I, you know, can't imagine having another dog than her. But I did agonize a little bit and leave it, baby. Come on, hey, pork chop, leave it. Leave it, come. But ultimately we had just moved into the house. We were looking to get a dog. And when we moved into our house, it was quite a fixer upper and it still is. I've been putting a lot of work in, but like, it's all been things that I've done completely by myself. And, uh, you know, for the amount of work that I'm putting into making this house beautiful and the amount of work that I put in every day to like maintaining it in a livable state, um, cause the house is huge and it's just me and my wife right now. Um, for the amount of work that I put into that, I just didn't want to need to deal with like the constant of dog hair. And, you know, I had Goldens growing up and my sister has a pit bull and my aunt has like a pit, like Jack Russell mix and like all of them, the, you know, across the spectrum of, of dogs, they all shed other than like these, you know, specific breeds, your poodles and your doodles and your Portuguese water dogs and the like. So this beautiful chop was expensive. She's a designer dog and it's a, we, we did a light moral disservice or a heavy moral disservice, depending on how you look at it by getting her. I'm willing to own that um, as much as I'm willing to own that. I love this fucking dog. So make of that what you will. I'll admit that it was a selfish decision and I also love her. And uh, you know, I don't think there's intellectually arguing against love is a, a fruitful endeavor ever. Endeavor ever, ever. All right, pork chop. So that was the hike. We're just about at the end now. Just locking up this chop. All right, come on, Bubba. So yeah, that was hike and chat number one. Um, something I'm kind of deciding as I go is that I don't want to like film in my studio uh, intros or outros to these. I, don't, I think that'll be silly. So I'm gonna flip this camera around. 
yeah, I want these to be sort of on the road, on the fly, like spontaneous situations. So that was hike and chat number one. Hopefully it's out and I didn't just sit on this forever. I have a really big complex about like putting things out that aren't polished to shit and it, it really doesn't do me any favors. So this whole thing is, is really an experiment in me getting over another personal fear, which is putting out substandard work or work that people won't like. But as Review Bra says, the people who don't like it, who cares? Some people will like it. And at the end of the day, if I enjoy it, that's really the point. And I did enjoy this. I really enjoyed it. It was actually a bit of a thing, me deciding whether I was gonna bring the GoPro and try to do this on this walk or not, but I really enjoyed it. The walk went by quickly. I definitely did some verbal meandering, but again, this is for me, so I guess it doesn't matter. Thanks, if you watched this all the way through, I really appreciate it. If not, totally good. Check out my other channel. There's scripted stuff there with background music that may make it better, may make it worse. Hard to say. For now though, I'll say, take care.